Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for January the 25th of 2020. Well, it is titled Rubens Galaxy. So what do we see here? Well, this is an example of a spiral galaxy and sizes can be difficult to tell because you don't have anything else for comparison. So how big is this galaxy compared to our own Milky Way? Many spiral galaxies are roughly the size of our Milky Way, maybe half the size or twice the size. This one, on the other hand, is actually a tremendously large spiral galaxy, about eight times the size of our Milky Way. So 800,000 light years across as compared to about 100,000 light years for our Milky Way. So an incredibly large spiral galaxy and one of the things that astronomers study to see how can you get a spiral galaxy this large. Now this is also called Rubens galaxy because it was part of uh, Vera Rubens a study to look at the rotation of spiral galaxies. So it's one of the ones that she used to study how spiral galaxies rotate. And one of the things that came out of that was the concept of dark matter. And what that means is that when we look at a galaxy like this, we're only seeing a tiny portion of the material that makes up the galaxy. While there may be a trillion stars in this galaxy, there are also many times that uh, matter worth of matter outside of the galaxy. And one of the things that uh, Vera Rubin discovered was the idea was that there were dark matter halos. Now dark matter is something that simply does not give off any kind of light. And when we say light, we mean not just visible light that we see here from this image, but it also doesn't give off x rays or radio waves or anything else. It is essentially invisible to us and only detectable through its gravitational effects. And it seems to be present in all galaxies, including our own Milky Way, that there is a great halo of dark matter around them. And the ordinary matter, the stuff that makes up you and me and the stars and planets, is actually a very small portion of that material. So this is one of those galaxies that helped to us to begin to understand how much dark matter there is. And in fact, what we find is that for every for a galaxy here, when we look at a galaxy, everything that we see that's part of the galaxy, we can need, uh, depending on the exact galaxy, five, 10, or even more galaxies worth of material outside of the actual galaxy itself. So we see one galaxy here 800,000 light years across containing a trillion stars. But there has to be, you know, maybe 10 times that amount of material outside the galaxy to account for how the galaxy actually rotates. Otherwise, the galaxies would be rotating, rotating too fast and would tear themselves apart. So dark matter is very important and it becomes very important even in clusters of galaxies to an even larger extent than for just the galaxies themselves. So here we get to see one of the galaxies and a very large one that helped with some of those very early studies decades ago. So that was our picture of the day for January the 25th of 2020. It was titled Rubens Galaxy. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be Rubens Ridge. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.